three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting film journey here on uh, Inside Movies Galore. I am one of your hosts, and today we are continuing our action mo uh, 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 month of August, uh, which was our picked theme. Um, and uh, one of my choices ended up getting through, uh, which is a film that was filmed in 2006 uh, called Crank. Um, and it is directed by Mark Nebeldine and Brian Taylor. And it basically st uh, uh, stars uh, Jason Statham as Dwight Oakham among uh, and uh, I believe a Amy Adams among several others. Um, and let's see what IMDb says about the uh, uh, the film here. Um, <coughs> second here. So uh, actually, it was Amy, Amy Smart, uh, but um, professional assassin Chev Chelios. Uh, learns his rival has injected him with a poison that will kill him if his heart rate drops, which is essentially the storyline. So, uh, let's uh, go over to you, uh, Cryptaxis. Uh, why don't you tell us? Uh, was this the first time watching the movie? Well, this is my first time actually seeing this movie. I had heard of it um, pretty much right away when it came out. Um, so I knew about it. Uh, I was a little confused when we picked Crank because uh, there are a handful of other movies called Crank. Uh, I think there's even some like fancy art film called Crank and then a couple different other ones. So at first I was like, is this the Jason Statham one? Or... So it, um, it was a little difficult on my memory <laughs> as to which one we're going to be seeing. But uh, yeah, this was my first time actually watching it. And I thought it was fine, like, as an action movie. Uh, it, it felt like something I would have enjoyed more, like, if I was younger, though. Like, if I'd seen this when I was maybe, like, 16 or 15, it was it had, it had kind of a lot of things that would, I think, have appealed to me better at that age. Because um, it's very, uh, it's very excessive, let's put it that way. Like, a lot of the stuff that happens is just really wild uh to <laughs> put it plainly okay so um the action was kind of subdued uh i thought it's like i don't know i didn't i didn't rec i didn't have any like john wick shootouts like stand out to me like it was it was mostly just him like i gotta try to keep my heart rate up and him just doing crazy things to that effect mm -hmm. Um, rather than being, like, all about, like, combat or whatever. So, okay. I don't know, I, I, I had a weird time following it. Uh, it's, it's really hard to put into words. Okay. I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was fine. Just, um, I know, it feels like something I should probably rewatch a bit later, um, to get more of a grip on because kind of a lot of things happen in really quick succession like the chinese restaurant and the hospital and just, wow there's there's a lot going on here okay so. um is that pretty much it then for your first impression then um yeah basically okay um heading over to you tammy was this a first time watch for you no, I don't remember the first time I watched it, but um, I think it was probably with you. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought it was okay. I mean, it was pretty intense, you know. He, he was just running around crazy trying to keep his heartbeat up. And doing a bunch of wild things and like going off the wall on everybody. Because, you know, nobody else knows why, he, why he's acting that way except for his doctor that he keeps calling. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and the doctor keeps telling him, "We'll do this and do that and do that," and then he's you know until he can meet up with him. You so, know that's uh, Dwight Yoakam, uh, the uh, the country singer, right? Yeah. The uh, the guy is playing his doctor. Okay. So. Um. But I thought it was thought it was okay. I know it, it's it's pretty intense, but okay. it's funny at times too, especially when he's running around with only a hospital gown. <laughs> well, so. yeah, you were you you were turning to tell him, Emmy. I would never have taken all of my clothes off and stuck that gown on. I would at least have kept some of my clothing on. <laughs> but he decided to put it on and run around bare ass naked. Except for the combat boots or whatever he was the, <laughs> that he was wearing. Okay. Well, I actually, yeah, yeah, boots. I actually do believe that I did see this actually in the theater. Um, uh, let's see, 2006, it's about, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's roughly almost, almost 20 years ago. So I, I definitely could have seen, uh, seen this in the th uh, theater. I think I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, and, uh, I liked it. Um, I liked it then, and I, I guess I still like it now, uh, partially because it's the craziest film that I've ever seen Jason Statham in, and that's uh, this is kind of the film that got me into Jason Statham movies. I mean, before that, uh, that I'd been like a Steven uh, uh, Seagal fan. I wasn't really much of a Van Damme fan, uh, 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 fan as far as action goes. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, guys tend to get into like Rambo and, uh, 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 and all that uh, jazz. I didn't get to see Rambo until uh, after I saw this movie. So, uh, but I, uh, I mean, some of the things that he does in here are, um, things that you probably wouldn't be able to get away with like as of now uh, <laughs> um probably uh, probably like the uh, the moment where where he yells al qaeda at, at the at the t taxi driver or things of that na in, in nature i mean that that would be sensitive to some people you know um especially in this day, uh, day and age um and vice versa. So uh, I, uh, I'm glad that I was able to uh, to get to see uh, see it again. I mean, it is fast paced. Um, there was a lot going on. on. Um, I may not entirely like everything that, uh, that he does in the uh, film, but uh, but because it was so off the wall and random, um, and uh, what whatnot, it just seemed like. It, it almost seemed like he was improv it along the way. You, you know what I mean? Like, he he was doing the improv <laughs> Uh But uh, uh, that being said, um, let us go into uh, the plot while we wait here for Jake. I know he's going to be showing up here, uh, here somewhat soon. So... We do have Chevy Chelios, um, uh, and I do uh, uh, do believe uh, in the very beginning, uh, Jason Statham uh, uh, as Ch uh, as Chevy Ch uh, uh, Chev Chelios um, actually called himself Chip um, at one point in time. So I'm not sure if he entirely knew his uh, knew his name when he did this acting. <laughs> uh, or may, maybe th that's just how I actually heard him say it because he 
to, uh, to me, I heard him say, say Chip instead of Chev. Um, and maybe it, that's just the way his British accent uh, uh, does it for me. Um, but he is an assassin that uh, that we know of, and he wakes up. And at first, uh, uh, when he, uh, when he wakes up, it does that POV like pers uh, uh, first person like camera uh, shit, like as if you were watching Hardcore Henry uh, there for a moment. But um, uh, you're not. You find out that you're Chev Chelios, uh, or at least the character is. And uh, he walks out to, I guess, his living room, and there is a disc that says fuck you on it. And he ends up picking up the video, and uh, a guy by the name of Ricky Verona uh, basically tells him he put some kind of Chinese drug in him where uh, he's going to die within an hour. And uh, sayonara, goodbye, uh, and all that jazz. He's having fun, I guess, with his brother. Um, and uh, they're showing him that uh, they recorded this while he was asleep. Um, so at the end of the video, Chevy, uh, or Chev, uh, goes out uh into his what kind of car tammy i believe it was a riviera okay uh a gold riviera um a, a car and ends up starting to call his uh, uh, uh this doctor that he knows who evidently isn't in at the time because he's getting some kind of mas uh, massage or uh, or whatever um and uh, is there anything that uh, that uh, uh, you wanted to say, Dustin, about uh, anything that I've, I've talked about so far? No, I keep. Okay. Um, well, um, what about you, Tammy? Is there anything about uh, about what what, what we uh, I've said so far that you wanted to say something about, like maybe the uh, maybe the fact that this drug is making him uh, whatever, and uh, starting to call this doctor, and and uh, what kind of sense are you uh, are you getting right off the bat here? Well, evidently he really screwed up that they're. <laughs> That they did this to him, and uh, once he realizes it, yeah, he lost his temper and started smashing everything in sight and getting a hold of, and was trying to get a hold of his doctor. We're trying to figure out how he's going to keep it. Then, once he calms down for a moment, he starts to feel weird. Because then the drugs take an effect because his his heart rate's going back to normal. So yeah, and during I think this first conversation, he ends up uh, um, going into uh, being chased by some cops and uh, ends up going into a mall. Hey, Jake. Um, Hi. Why don't I stop here for a moment and get your first impression of this movie, if this was a first-time watch. Wow, you um, already went through all those, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we kind of okay. did, but uh, but oh, let's get uh, let's get your thoughts uh, on this okay. film and what you well, thought. This is not my first viewing. Um, but it is my first viewing in probably since about 07 or 08. It's been a hot minute. Um, and this is a movie that has a story. Uh, <laughs> kind of a fun story. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's been so long since I've seen it. 
Um, so back in the day, uh, I, yeah, back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> when this, uh, this came out in 06, of course, I was working, uh, living and working in Salem, uh, working at the local, uh, watering hole, um, and I frequently, for much of the time I worked there, I was in within walking distance of the restaurant. So I sometimes would get, you know, I'd hang out at the bar afterwards and, you know, have a few and then walk home. And around the time this was out, also, I... Uh, I had a friend who, not like a close friend, but, you know, an acquaintance, uh, who also worked there, who also, I can't remember if he was still at the school or if he was a recent graduate, but he uh, had belonged to a fraternity at the school and he was renting a house. He and a couple of buddies were renting what was essentially an off-campus party house. It was just a block down from the restaurant, and it was a block down from the school. And they had a projection screen that they had nicked from the school. Uh, <laughs> that they had. Um, I went to a party there once where they were playing a porn on it during the party. Um yeah. So that was kind of uh, fun. But one night I got off uh, after work, had a couple, of the, well, I had a few at the bar and uh, I don't know, a couple, a few, whatever. I was kind of toasted. Um, I stopped by there on the way home and we ended up, they pulled down the screen and uh, we just sat there, popped open a couple beers and watched this on the stolen projection screen. And <laughs> what, hanging out with buddies uh, in a party house, drinking beers, watching this, you know, illicitly. That's the way to watch a movie like this. <laughs> <laughs> and so I really, I enjoyed that viewing a lot. And um, I always, uh, you know, I, I kept it in the back of my mind as, you know, one day I'll add that to the collection. It was fun, you know. I had totally forgotten that my boy Dwight Yoakam was in this. If I had remembered, I would have picked it up years ago. But because he's actually really fun in this movie. But uh, this was definitely only my second viewing. Uh, I am coming off of being sick, so I had to watch it stone sober. And just watching it on my little computer screen in my room wasn't nearly as fun as that first experience. But it held up surprisingly well. Um, this is an absolutely ridiculous movie. Just on the face of it, it is an absurd movie. Um, and a lot I of thought the, it know, would go well as a pairing with Dead Leaves. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. No, no, I'm not disputing it as an action movie. <laughs> that, actually, um, that makes a lot of sense because it had a kind of similar, like, feel of um unpredictability yeah it um okay actually i think we set up this month pretty nicely because we had like the balls to the wall bullshit uh like batshit insane action of the first movie and then we did a movie that was actually a little more plot driven <laughs> and then now we're back to the kind of the balls to the wall insanity there's some plot here a lot more than there was in dead leaves but <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> It's definitely a a solid action film, and it actually is fairly entertaining, even if you're sober. Um, now I can definitely say that I, I think having a couple of beers and maybe a toke might be the ideal way to watch this movie, but um, I wouldn't necessarily try or recommend any of the other potential uh, avenues. But it's. Uh, <laughs> It definitely is one that had, um, and then the timing of this, I'm still sad. I'm still very sad and just a little bitter 
that I had to pass up going to see Dwight Yoakam in concert about three weeks ago with the Mavericks. I really wanted to go to that show and I had to pass it up. And so then I ended up watching this movie right afterwards and I'm like, huh, okay, that's interesting timing. <laughs> um, it, it's funny uh, that the, uh, the next movie uh, that happened after this one that I thought was kind of like, Balls the uh, the wall uh, wall action pack was shoot him up with uh, um uh, uh, with, uh, with Clive Owen uh, the next oh year. Clive Owen right yeah I still <laughs> shoot him up that would have been a good one for this month <laughs> yeah it's an okay movie but shoot him up is like a live action cartoon um and really this one's like a video game I saw so many things on IMDb about how this was clearly a, a GTA knockoff. And I believe it. <laughs> yeah. I could definitely see the GTA influence here. Um, but the one last thing I just want to mention, um, a small gripe, and I would have mentioned it at some point or another, but I'll go ahead and get it out there. They do have a really good, and when we get to music, we'll talk about it. They do have a pretty solid soundtrack here, and it really does fit the vibe of the movie and help get you pumping and everything. But you got a movie where you got Dwight Yoakam in the cast in a key supporting role. You got a propulsive driving soundtrack. And a movie where a guy literally has to keep going faster and faster or he will die. <laughs> That's the whole point. And one of Yoakam's biggest hits is Fast As You. I don't know how many of y'all played that clip that I sent out. How did they not think to put that on the soundtrack? That was a golden opportunity, and they <laughs> <laughs> But whatever. Uh, I get that out there, and, and now that, that ends that complaint. I also don't know how in the hell this had a sequel. But anyway, I haven't seen the sequel. But Oh, it, 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 it is uh, uh, even more crazier. Uh, because he's, uh, um, he, they basically take out his heart and place a fake heart in it that uh, that it's – Kind of the same situation where, like, if he doesn't keep it, like, because, alive. Because uh, a fall from that height, the heart would clearly be the only thing that needs true, to be replaced. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Um, it is balls to the wall nuts. Uh, I, I think it's even nutsier than this one. But, uh, but I figured we'd do this one first. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun rewatch and, um, yeah, I'll, I, 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 you know, I'm glad we had a chance to look at it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, as you were coming on, I, I had just gotten through like the first, uh, like the, the first sev uh, several scenes where, where, okay, he wakes up, you, you kind of have that, uh, that POV moment, um, uh, uh, a moment where, you know, they, it takes him to the living room. There, there's a disc that says "fuck you" on it, um, and uh, he plays the video, and it's this video of this dude, the name of Ricky Verona, uh, and his brother uh, that they had recorded while he was asleep, and they stuck a needle in it in his neck and uh, gave him what we later find out it, it, it might be the Beijing cocktail. Um, mm -hmm. Which, um, if he doesn't keep uh, keep uh, moving, uh, he could die, uh, die within the hour. And uh, the, the first thing he does is he, get, he gets into his um, uh, gold Riviera um, and uh, starts on his mer uh, merry way. And he starts calling uh, like uh, the different mm -hmm. people he knows. He can't get a hold of the do uh, doctor at uh, first. He's talking to like or his girlfriend. <laughs> she says secretary, but we know differently. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean his girlfriend, Chevy, uh, Chevy's girlfriend. He can't get hold of her either. Um, yeah, he can't get a hold of her, and and he basically says, "Honey, get your cell phone." <laughs> yeah, um, but. Um, uh, he gets a, a hold of his uh, fr uh, friend, I guess, who 
uh, his name is Kalos in here. Um, mm -hmm. And he sets them out to look for the, for this Ricky Verona guy, a, a, a guy uh, or at least where, uh, where like his known associates are. And uh, lo, uh, lo and behold, and uh, 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 as the, uh, as he is, gets a phone call from his doctor back, he is uh, then uh, being chased by cops through a mall. <laughs> yes, because he went full GTA and somehow managed to crash his car on the escalator in a mall. <laughs> As you do, <laughs> and I love this uh, this uh, this conversation that he is having with Mike Yoakum's char uh, uh, character because he's he's telling him all about it and the fact that he's got to keep moving and what it is is he's got to keep his adrenaline up and uh, he's like I'm sorry it's hard uh, hard to hear you and all that jazz <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, ends up, the, go ahead. Well, it's one of the reasons why, like I said, I really enjoy the Doc character in this one. He's like real unflappable. He's real, uh, like he he seems like someone who knows what he's doing. Uh, he know he's clearly familiar with a lot of these uh, things. He's clearly comfortable talking to a guy who he knows is a criminal. Uh, but he also does seem to be a competent practicing physician. <laughs> and um, and then, like, there's a scene on the plane where he's talking to his patient next to this old couple, and he's just saying all this stuff over the phone that is clearly violating doctor-patient <laughs> confidentiality. But mm -hmm. I just, I, you know, the lady, you see her twitch every now and then, like, what? <laughs> It's pretty amusing. But of oh, course, yeah, he was definitely. on vacation. He ends up coming back to help his boy out. <laughs> well, and after he's done with that conversation, he says something like, I'm sorry about that. It was an emergency con uh, uh, phone, uh, uh, phone conversation or some shit like that. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, he ends up telling him that he needs to go find some uh, epinephrine. Uh, which is, is evidently in a 10 milligram like needle type thing. So he ends up going to like a walk-in clinic and uh, he goes up to the counter and, and to this chick, he's like, I need something with an E. And it, she's like, England? No. She, well, he shoves an old dude out of the way. <laughs> uh, this is uh, also after he sticks up the convenience store Basically, so that he, well, he goes to a bar to lean on one dude for Ricky's whereabouts, ends up buying some Coke off of him. Oh, yeah, that was, um, um, that was uh, in a bar with, with uh, these dudes called the, uh, the, the Sin Disciples or something like something that. Like that. Right. <laughs> Which happens to be a bar full of persons of color. And, uh, of course, they all come in ready to pop a cap on him. And he's like, his friend is like, no, no, no. We're just having a discussion. But every now and then the guns come back out. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chevy, like, ends up snorting coke off the floor. And he's like, this isn't enough. So he ends up taking on the whole bar just to get his adrenaline pumping. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and he ends yeah. up uh, buying some coke. During that uh, that yeah. whole effort, <laughs> and then he goes to a convenience store and, and uh, robs the convenience store. Basically, it takes any energy drink thing he can get his hands on. <laughs> it's like popping Red Bulls for the next several scenes. Well, um, I, saw, I saw he grabs some packets of like fuel. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, he he basically uh, like uh, grabs a uh, uh, grab. I think he takes a garbage ba uh, bag and dumps it out. And, yeah, yeah. But um, after that, uh, he then uh, ultimately goes to uh, uh, to the, uh, that hospital. Of course, yeah. there's a a, dr a druggy um, 
that's in the uh, the lobby where where he he, he basically gets nowhere on getting an ep, uh, uh, some epinephrine. He, he's like, uh, dude, uh, uh, nasal spray. Uh, that just so happens to have epinephrine in it. So he takes another, a bunch of bottles of that. Another musician there who I don't think was featured on the soundtrack, and it would have been great. Um, I, that was the late Chester Bennington of uh, Lincoln Park and so forth. Um, very small little cameo there, but kind of fun. Okay. I remember Lincoln Park. Uh, right. But um, ultimately, uh, he goes into the main hospital, and I guess he... Um, uh, gets, uh, uh, I guess the cops kind of kind of get turned on to uh, to him, so he ends up while some EMTs are like working on a, uh, on a, a patient and get, uh, taking him to the ER. He's trying to uh, 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 trying to hold that EMT person up to try to get him some epinephrine uh, and needles and. Uh, he grabs a, bu a bunch of those, but the, uh, but while he's grabbing those, he tells he tells him to uh, amp up the pads that are on that. Uh, he that said, cart. "I think he said juice me, right?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> later, yeah. Which he basically ju uh, ju juices him into the elevator. <laughs> And uh, I'm trying to th think whether he goes up or down. I think he goes down. Um, and then he kind of escapes from there. Uh, and then I, I, I believe it isn't uh, like he, he gets. Yeah, he, he uh, ends up uh, um, uh, taking a, a, a cop's uh, motorcycle. Um and uh, finally, I think he uh, gets a hold of his girl, which evidently she she's overslept. Don't forget, uh, he had changed into hospital robes while he was in the hospital, hoping it would help him hide. Didn't work that well. So, which I believe that's the part that Tammy uh, 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 turned over to me, uh, and she was like, "You know, if I were actually uh, going to." Uh, put on some uh, uh, some hospital gear, uh, gear. I would have at least kept a, on a a piece of clothing, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he ended up Flintstone in it, uh, uh, bare assed, uh, 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 like almost the re almost some of the rest of the, uh, uh, the uh, the time while he was on the motorcycle, and um, I guess when he finally showed up at his girlfriend's place. Uh, he was in a jumpsuit of some sort because uh, uh, she was like, is that your new look? <laughs> but um, I believe there is a scene that happens before that because uh, his friend Kalos uh, ends up uh, walking over to a, a taco tr a truck or, or, or what whatnot. He ends up seeing yes. one of his brothers end up ending up going into a restaurant. He uh, he took care of the brother before going to the hospital because he was still wearing his. He entered the hospital with blood all over him. So that, yeah, that was first. Okay, so he does cut off the hand of that uh, dude and then call uh, Ricky Verona on the cell uh, cell uh, phone all before he ends up into the hospital. There's a lot that goes on. So uh, so uh, so he uh, so just so cut his hand head. off. He 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 cuts his hand. Then he and Kylo both beat the shit out of him for a while, while the brother does get some good licks in. And then, uh, yeah, ultimately they do kill him, though. And then I he mean, calls. It's funny you yeah. say something about licks, because, because he answers the phone be like, uh, 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 hey, well, what do you want me to do? Uh, uh, do, lick your own ass? Okay. <laughs> and he's like, what? Well, um, I just killed your brother, you motherfucker. Uh, and then he mentioned the, uh, uh, his necklace, and he was like, uh, like my granddad gave us the, that necklace. Um, and, you know, uh, that just made him all, uh, all uh, matter. Um, 
Yeah. And then, um, of course, we have him uh, uh, going to his girlfriend's place. I think uh, that's when uh, some of uh, Verona's men were sent after him. Um, and uh, that part was a little funny because the girlfriend kept forgetting th uh, things back at the apartment. Um, yeah. And she was kind of a diss. She was. It's like I said in the message chat, it's ironic that Amy Smart played this character because she was not a smart character. She <laughs> she does show a little bit of canniness later on. She does seem a little late to the party. Basically, <laughs> after the public sex scene, she starts to catch on. But once she catches on, she is no longer 100% liability. But for yeah, those first she, few scenes, she's straight up liability. Yeah, she is. Um, uh, and I think the first thing that he didn't. does is he actually takes her to a cafe, and he basically straight up tells her that, uh, uh, babe, remember uh, when I told you that I was this? Well, I'm actually this. Um, I think that kind of already happened before the uh, Chinatown scene, and that she was going along with that for like the sake of oh, yeah. keeping him alive instead of just like, oh, what's happening? And um, that was a very strange. It was weird. The whole thing was weird, and everybody was just kind of like, "Oh, what's going on? It's performance art." Like nobody tried to stop them or say anything. Uh, everybody just got got their binoculars out and was like, Ooh. "Yeah, I've got to say, after my my first viewing, the cool. Chinatown uh, sex scene was definitely the scene I remember." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and I'll remember too because everyone was okay with it. <laughs> you know, I uh, will say, that, what's up? Which makes you think that if you were in Chinatown, anything could happen and people would be okay with it. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I think that's <laughs> an oversimplification. You know, when they when they had that line in Chinatown, you know, forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. Really, that was an ace, a racist line that didn't age well. But this seems to, in a way, be a callback to that. But uh, I will say this scene, uh, I thought it was absolutely hilarious the first time I saw it. This time I'm coming back to it with the benefit of about, you know, not quite 20 more years, but I'm definitely older definitely wiser and I'm definitely a little more sensitive to things like uh, well let's call for what it is you could pretty much call this a date rape scene in a sense and she is protesting at first and so I had much more mixed feelings but by the end of it she is a full on I am thrilled to be here participant so it's I have mixed feelings about that part of it. But there were a couple parts that are still friggin' hilarious. Like early on where the woman sees what's about to happen and she tries to ch shield her children's eyes and one of them straight bats her hand away. <laughs> <laughs> that made me crack up. And then later when they're all... That was the part I remembered that everyone was cheering that they were all standing around cheering. And so especially got like that uh, that bus of high school girls that are just applauding and catcalling and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then a little bit before that, uh, D uh, Dwight's character, he ends up uh, 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 telling, uh, uh, say, uh, mentioning to uh, 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 Seb that, uh, you know, uh, do you have a like a full-blown heart on? He's like, yeah, and then a, a little bit, a little bit after that, uh, that he's like standing in li uh, in line watching like the te uh, te television, and there's this dude who looks down at his heart on, and he's like looking at him, and that's just <laughs> priceless because uh, <laughs> Doc very specifically told him how to administrate the epinephrine, and of course Jellios didn't listen, and he ended up taking a whole 
what was it five doses i think is what he said yeah all at once <laughs> yeah yeah that would have adverse effects on any remotely normal person <laughs> Well, and uh, I do believe that he does. Um, evidently, there is an, a, a boss that is like above uh, Verona uh, uh, that uh, they call Carlito, which uh, I guess he has a little bit of a a, a, a moment where where he talks to, uh, to to him first, and then they end up. I guess there is a, another group of guys that uh, that evidently uh, end up taking his friend Kalos uh, and like killing him, which um, by uh, by the time he actually gets to this building, oh, and uh, the first guy that he actually um, kills on top of that bu uh, building uh, uh, before he even gets to where Kalos was. Uh, that guy I remember uh, 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 seeing in Bruce Almighty who gets that monkey stuck up his butt. <laughs> <I'm not> um, <laughs> <laughs> did you say before I got here, did you say what was going on in the first place? Why uh, Chevy was poisoned in the first place? Uh, Chevy was poisoned for the uh, misaccusation, which we find out later. Of, well, no, uh, it was an accurate accusation. He was supposed to kill the guy. <laughs> well, yeah, he was supposed to kill this guy, uh, guy. And for all intents and purposes, it looks like he actually did. Yeah. Um, th uh, th uh, throughout the entire movie, up until a certain uh, point where we find out, no, he did not. In fact, he told uh, told him to get lost for forty eight hours. Uh, which, uh, spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen the movie, go out and see it before you I listen to our uh, conversation. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're going to spoil it for you. But uh, um, is there anyone here, uh, like Dustin? Uh, is there anything that you'd like to say about any of the happenings that I have mentioned here? The thing with the uh, epinephrine and, uh, well, the gratuitous boner joke was kind of, like, real to me because of some things I've experienced with um, drug reactions. So it was kind of like, yeah, that sucks, doesn't it, dude? Yeah. I, I had kind of a moment with that, but, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it's awkward to address. Let's let's just say that. But um eh. So and then of course the whole Ken Hunting was just like, what am I seeing? You know, that was um I can't believe they got away with that. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, there was a lot, a lot that they got away with in this movie. It, w it wasn't there. <laughs> um, and what uh, what they got away with in the second one, uh, which if you've seen this one, you've got to see the, uh, that was the, the second one. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a second one. I believe it was called Crank High Voltage. Crank to High Voltage, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he had to shock himself to keep himself alive. Uh, using any way, <laughs> way necessary, <laughs> but so basically, he was a Frankenstein monster in the second one. <laughs> basically, on the run. But uh, th that being said, um, we uh, we do have um, him uh, ending up realizing that not only are uh, Carlito's men after him, so are uh, 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 Verona's men after him. Um, so I guess they end up. Uh, oh, his girlfriend ends up showing up, uh, uh, which we kind of had the ditzy blonde uh, 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 moment of her getting shot around, uh, uh, shot at around him, and uh, th they end up going off in her car, uh, and. 
Of course, normally in like Jason Statham movies, you see him directly hitting people. I guess they um, uh, actually took a moment to, uh, to have him actually uh, kill a, a few people uh, uh, here because you kept seeing like men come out uh, outside of the uh, building and it was just a little chaotic. And, and then they had him going around in that little ditzy yellow uh, car thing. Uh, which did I, uh, did I see that uh, them actually spin that car like backwards or something uh, at one moment? I don't know, but uh, I do believe that there was a cop chase uh, 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 here as well, um, and uh, the, uh, I, I uh, do believe that uh, some of the uh, bad guys were after the, uh, uh, them, and I I, I think. Uh, I think he took care of them. Uh, one, I think one of the, uh, them ended up uh, uh, running into a car, and then another one, uh, one ended up running into a rail, and he ended up going and shoot, uh, 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 shooting them. Uh, and I think another one ended up being uh, hit by either a truck or a van or something like that. <laughs> but... Uh, they ended up, I believe, at this hotel, uh, which I guess th this is wh where, oh, he does actually hook up with the doctor, which he hooks him up with this um, machine that, uh, that evidently is an adrenaline drip ma uh, machine of some sort, uh, which... Uh, once he gets to the hotel, they actually confiscate that from him um, and his we uh, weapons and all that. And that's about what, uh, what, when things get uh, get, uh, get a little screwy. This, Basically, uh, once yeah. the doctor kind of stabilizes him, uh, he he's like he tells him he's like, dude, I can maybe keep you alive on life support for a few more days. Or I could juice you up with a really great cocktail so you can go out happy. And basically, uh, uh, Chelios just looks at him and is like, I just need an hour. So that's when he hooks him up with that little drip, which basically gives him a pause on the clock, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, they take uh, take away that pause for, uh, from him, and then... Uh, shit gets shitty because uh, uh, at least <laughs> for the, uh, for uh, for uh, for him and for the, uh, them because guess what the boss that he was supposed to take care of actually shows up with his men and starts kick, uh, kicking their asses. Right. And, uh, so this is where some of the threads come together that you know we kind of touched on earlier, but basically Carlos wanted the triad out of the picture, I guess. And he kind of, he I think he intentionally set up Chelios to get him out of the picture uh, because it might be cheaper and easier to control Ricky. Uh, and, and, and Chelios says as much. He's like, you're going to be doing the same thing I am for half the price, basically. <laughs> and um, so essentially it was Carlos being a ruthless businessman but it bites him in the ass when the guy that he thought was dead is not. <laughs> well, and also Ricky Verona here. Um, he keeps uh, um, Ch uh, Cheb yeah. actually keeps telling, uh, 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 like needing him uh, uh, that yeah. uh, he's uh, Carlito's little bitch. And he's like, I'm not he little, is a little bitch. <laughs> he is. Ricky is a whiny little bitch. <laughs> um, which is kind of annoying, really, in a lot of ways, although it certainly fits the role. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, it kind of needles him into actually um, going up against Carlito uh, when he's trying to actually, uh, actually leave in the helicopter, because I believe he shoots him, uh, 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 him and he gets into the helicopter, and that's when Chev... Yeah. Uh, it, it jumps onto the helicopter and they have their little uh, fight and uh, and I guess fall out of the uh, the helicopter, which I guess 
uh, is noticed by the uh, newscaster on the ground and all that jazz because uh, uh, there, uh, I do like that there is um, um, uh, a news presence uh, throughout the film uh, because uh, because um, you know that that's how uh, so uh, some of the uh, uh, Chelios uh, moments uh, have been broadcast to uh, Verona and his people, um, but um, there is a moment where the the TV newscaster on the ground is actually seeing this happening in the sky, and of course you see uh, Chelios and him fa uh, 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 fall, um, and I do believe that he actually shoots uh, uh, Verona. Um, and as far as we can tell, he actually uh, falls straight into the ground, and that's what we see. <laughs> well, he hits a car, you know, and then bounces onto the ground. <laughs> hits a car hard enough to crumple the uh, crumple the, the the roof, bounces and lands what 20, 30 feet away. It's like, yeah, yeah, he ain't surviving that fall. At least, you, uh, so you think. <laughs> so you would think, yes. Uh, we should also mention before he even gets into the ho helicopter, little bitch that he is, Verona gets uh, the fingers of one hand blown off by a stray bullet. So <laughs> that was kind of fun. Yeah, that that, that was. Uh, uh, like anything over the top that you can think of happened in this movie. So uh, so it's like, yeah, it, 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 you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Uh, but um, I believe that pretty much uh, wraps up the uh, uh, the film. I mean, it is pretty straightforward, and there is a lot that happens, but uh, and a lot of crazy shit. But that is pretty much it. And it's only an hour and a half long. Um, <clears throat> actually, a film that has been considered to be a probable uh, influence on this film which would have been a great choice for this month, and I kind of wish I'd thought of it. Um, I don't know how many of y'all have seen uh, Lola Rent, um, which was released here as the name Run, Run Lola Run. Um, and that was a uh, Tom Tykeward film from 98. That was a German film. And it's very similar. They're in, in the sense that it's 90 minutes long, most of it happens in real time. It's very action-packed, and it's basically about small-town criminals trying to uh, beat the clock, uh, essentially. The The rest of it is very different. Like, I honestly think plot-wise, this one's closer to speed. I think about it like speed with drugs, you know? <laughs> but... Um, it, so, but it's like someone took Speed and Lola Rent and Grand Theft Auto and threw them in a blender, and you got this movie. But, <laughs> but uh, I, it, so apparently the filmmakers have been asked more than once uh, what the if those were the influences, and, the, and they just have not said so. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, but it is kind of cool that it is largely in real time, you know, which works really good for an action film. You know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah. Um, and, uh, it, 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 it honestly was a pretty f f f fastly paced f f film. Um, Oh, well, uh, let's get into production here. Tammy, we haven't heard from you in a, li a, a little while. What did you think about the production of this film? Um, I thought it was pretty decent. They definitely had their hands full of trying to create all these different scenes that he did. I think, you know, from the car coming into the mall and smashing everything and then ending up on an escalator you know, on its side, you know? So... Um, I mean, that one in particular had to be a lot of fun to try and film. Well, and to try to get out of that escalator. <laughs> um, I mean, 
there were lots of scenes that were like really over the top. So it's like, you know, did you wonder? It doesn't seem so much like CGI, but it's like, boy, um, how did you manage to film that? You know, <laughs> or keep up with that, or you know. <laughs> I mean, geez, he wrecks, you know, he takes off with that motorcycle like he did. He wrecks the motorcycle. He gets the thing back off, you know. Definitely a lot of stunt work in this movie. Yeah, a lot of stunt work. wonder if it was really him that was flashing everybody's ass. <laughs> I think it was. I think he was it. I know, and I know Amy Smart had a body double. But I, I don't think Jay, I don't think Statham used one. <laughs> I, no, you know, I, that part right there was like, dude, I understood why you put the stupid thing on, but you know, as like a disguise, but you should have left something underneath it. <laughs> oh, you left a lot up to the imagination, that's for sure. Oh yeah, especially that. Him about and that, oh, I love that he's British and, just, <laughs> and he's standing there and he's hard and they think he's got a that it's the gun and it's not the gun, not that gun. <laughs> I love how he's British and uh, when he comes across some of the bad guys, he's like, Hello, girls, <laughs> but um. Uh, what about you, Dustin? What did you think about the production? I mean, it looked pretty good to me. Um, one of the things I thought was most interesting were those kind of like x-ray shots they would do of like the the heart of the pigeon. Like just like, oh, that was, how, that was like, kind of cool. Wasted he was on just stimulants. Like I thought that was cool. Okay, what about you, Jake? Uh, what did you think about the production of this movie? I think mean, it's pretty solid. Again, uh, as Tammy kind of touched on, like the the effects and the action and everything. I feel like if we had done the versus awards, I would have definitely put this up for stunt work. Uh, <laughs> I think as far as the effects. I don't know how much of it was CG and how much of it was practical. I don't know what the breakdown was, but I feel like it looked good mostly um i did think the movie had a really grainy kind of digitized look to it that wasn't my favorite uh but i guess that kind of goes in with the whole video game vibe um uh, and it was kind of cool how they used things like google earth maps and whatever to kind of do scene changes you know it kind of, again, goes with that sort of vibe. And I liked how they used some old school video game stuff at the start and the beginning. Like, you know, like that, that old heart against the 8-bit well, screen or whatever it was. That was kind of fun. Um, the production design, like in terms of the settings they used and everything... I, I feel like they did sink a pretty good chunk of change in the production on this one. So, you know, I feel like it shows. Um, it could have looked slicker. It could have looked a little more appealing. But I do think that it uh, it's pretty solid that way. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I have to kind of agree, uh, agree there with... Uh... Uh, with a little bit, uh, a bit of what you, Dustin, said about the uh, uh, the um, exposition that they did of the pigeon's heart, uh, uh, heart in a, a way that it, it its adrenaline was like fl uh, flowing uh, before it flew off um, to the um, juxtaposition of the slowing down moments of when his heart wa uh, 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 was. Um, I thought that those were pretty good, uh, 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 good as far as uh, that aspect of the production goes. Um, as far as like where things were and, uh, and whatnot, I thought that uh, uh, the uh, mall chase 
2018 was pretty cool. I mean, how can you get a car like that stuck uh, stuck in an escalator? Um, I just keep th uh, thinking about all the moments that we came across in the escalator where Tammy would think that it would eat her. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's definitely got an interesting, uh, personality as far as films go. Uh, let's go into music. Uh, I know, Jake, you mentioned, uh, that it had an interesting soundtrack earlier. earlier. I thought it uh, yeah. Oh, before we get into that, just a little interesting note. Like right across the street from our house, there's a car just like it for sale. Just huh. like his car for sale. Same color, too. <laughs> In that song. <laughs> yes, I left, I left to go out somewhere today and I was waiting to pull out. And I'm like, I looked across the street and I'm like, you have got to be kidding. I was staring at the thing like... I just saw you last night in the movie. <laughs> right. Uh, I think the, uh, <laughs> as far as the music goes, um, it is an interesting mix. And most of it is pretty heavy on uh, kind of like. Um, 90s music. Well, a little bit, but I was going to say more like kind of uh, like kind of house and R&B influenced, rap influenced, kind of hard rock. Like there's a little bit of, the, the, you know, we got some Quiet Riot in there. We've got some uh, No Effects. Um, Motorhead, ACDC, Strapping Young Lad, Wolf Mother. Which that was more of a two uh, two uh, two thousands, uh, but uh, but. Uh, Are you looking at the? You're not looking at the same list I am. Oh wait 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 wait. Yeah. Wrong movie. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, IMDb does list a song by uh, Jefferson Starship. They do have Marvin Gaye's "Let's Get It On" at one point. You know that's good times. Uh, <laughs> And they slow it down a little bit for Harry Nelson. Uh, this is not a complete list, though, because one of the interesting things... Oh, okay. I didn't think that sounded right. They had uh, Achy Breaky Heart, but it wasn't Billy Ray's version. It was Jared and Long. Uh, you know, they, there's some interesting stuff in there, but most of it for me was kind of like generic stuff that kind of blended together. It fit the movie really good, but I wouldn't go out and listen to the soundtrack on its own. It's one of the reasons I would have liked to hear some Dwight Yoakam and Linkin Park in there, give it a little more character. But <laughs> Yeah, one, uh, yeah, I, know, I remembered the achy, breaky heart, which I kept think, thinking, okay, uh, what was the reason for him doing that, uh, ex except for maybe actually hating country music <laughs> uh, he may have yeah uh, well, you, it is a song that is likely well if you like country especially if you like late 80s pop tinged country or especially if you like uh uh dance hall country <laughs> that's no, all i have actually it's kind Lover of an dancing groove I have actually seen Lover Boy what? in concert. Uh, so uh, so right. when uh, when uh, when they uh, put on Turn Me Loose, I thought that was cool. Very cool. Um, but I was going to say, like the, with that song, one reason it may be because that song was so you know, like I said, if he loved the song, it might have gotten him excited because it's a good dance song. But if he was one of the people who hated the song because, oh, man, that song was overplayed, um, you know, and I, I even though I kind of like it, I, I feel Weird Al's Achy Breaky song. I can definitely relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people can. Uh, I think that he, it may have been something where they were playing it as, oh, my God, this song again. This is going to get his heart going in rage or something like that. <laughs> 
And uh, I don't know, maybe that was, it could go either way, really. Whatever it was, it worked for the moment. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Dustin, anything on music or? Music was fine to me. Like, it didn't really stand out in my mind. Okay. So somebody might get mad at me for saying that, though. <laughs> well, in the the, uh, the uh, actual music, uh, the, uh, the composing music was done by Paul Helsinger, which I guess uh, uh, he's, he's done some interesting things, which I guess he composed the, uh, the music for that newer Monster Hunter movie. Um, but I guess he was a composer for uh, the, a one, the one with Mia Jovovich. And Resident Evil, the final chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, Underworld Awakening. I guess that 2011 Three Musketeers. Um, I did see the Resident Evil movie. So that had some mm -hmm. that had decent music. Oh, he, he yeah. did the uh, composing music for Underworld. Very really, really film right. series, so. And he did some uh, uh, music for some of those uh, Need for Speed games. Well, uh, Dave, earlier you mentioned Shoot 'Em Up. He did the music for that. Yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess uh, there they, there are similarities. <laughs> but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, he also uh, composed the music for the girl next door. So, <laughs> yeah, go figure. <laughs> but in, in any case, uh, let us move on to favorite scenes and our favorite character. Uh, let's uh, start with you, Tammy. Uh, favorite scene and or favorite character. Um. I guess he's my favorite character. What do you say his name? Chelius. Yeah. So Chev Chelius. Chev Chelius. He's just so off the wall. <laughs> um, geez, favorite scene. Oh, I guess when he's on his rampage in the hospital and you can see his butt. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on quite a rampage with just that gown on and those boots. It's like, <laughs> and then when he gets out of the hospital, he's just rutty with just that thing on. And it's like, really, dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what about you, Dustin? Uh, favorite scene or scenes and our favorite character? I'm still going with the uh, with the pigeon x-ray. That was neat. Or um, when he's like, give me the epinephrine with the gun at the hospital. It's like, what are you doing? Do you think you're going to get away with this? And like, he does, but at the same time, it's like, so blatant. You know? <laughs> so I enjoyed that. And, you know, Jason Statham is basically this whole movie. Like, everybody else is just kind of there. So. Okay. Uh, what about you, Jake? Uh, if you could uh, take a scene or scenes from this uh, movie and our favorite character, well, what, who and what would it be? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll agree that, with Dustin that uh, that Chelios carries the movie uh, pretty easily. I mean, it's all it's his movie. Uh, but my favorite is definitely the doc. Uh, he's he's he just amused me. Um, the uh honestly the movie had some characters who really annoyed me too so that ricky was one of ricky annoyed me so that was uh, on the one hand it made it so much more satisfying when he got it in the end but on the other hand uh, <laughs> but as far as favorite scenes 
Uh, I, even though it is problematic and I kind of don't, I feel a little dirty sticking with it. I still <laughs> got to say that Chinatown scene is probably my favorite one that, that, especially the applause at the end and that one moment with that kid batting his mom's hand away. <laughs> I just, I just thought that was hilarious. Um, and, you know, there were a couple other little... The scene the scene where the doc's on the plane giving medical advice that was very uncensored and unfiltered next to the old couple, I found that very amusing, too. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I would have to say... Chelios is uh, my uh, my favorite character, even though his girlfriend is like my second, and the doc my uh, my third, because she was uh, just as legally blonde as you know uh, yeah. legally blonde was. <laughs> well, I think more so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, she had this moment where where they were in the sewing va vac here, and she's uh, like, "You better beware, my boyfriend kills people," you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, Dwight Yoakam, uh, uh, he, he he's definitely uh, uh, he definitely acts like he knows what he's talking about uh, as the doctor. So, um, and uh Favorite Chelius moment besides was when he had the heart, uh, 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 when he, uh, I think when uh, uh, in the end when he actually bounced off the car, uh, uh, car and you, you assumed that he was dead. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, who uh, like actually falls from a helicopter and bounces? It looks dead to me. <laughs> yeah, bounces like that. Uh, that. Um, but uh, I, I mean, especially since last week we, we saw the girl fall into the car and she just fell. She didn't bounce off the car. She just fell. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, I just thought of something. Chelios might be part Bumble. You know, the old uh, that old Rudolph thing. <laughs> what about Bumbles? Bumbles bounce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I suppose I'll give you that one. But uh, in any case, uh, hopefully you out there, ladies and gentlemen, have enjoyed our discussion on this film. I thought uh, I thought this was a good film to bring to the action table. Um, if you have not seen the film, uh, go out and see it. It is a blast. If you, I mean. Uh, you may or may not enjoy it. Um, and uh, I like films that go wild and off the uh, off the edge myself. So, um, uh, as far as films go, uh, just go and see it and let us know down in the comments what you thought of the of the film, our discussion, and uh, uh, whether you liked or disliked the film. So, um, uh, next week. I do uh, uh, believe we are. Do are we doing Baby Driver next week? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, which is a choice brought to us by, uh, uh, by our good friend Jake here. Uh, but let us go into our outros uh, and tell us, uh, tell you guys a little bit about who we are. So, uh, Dustin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Uh, well, I have a YouTube channel called The Crypt of Horrors where I. Show off the really cool horror movie stuff I find, um, or at least I do when I'm actually making videos. And I can be found on the Crypt of Horrors, uh, that YouTube channel, which I would like to change to Cryptaxis eventually. Uh, Cryptaxis is where you can find me on Twitter, uh, where I hang out. Not quite as much as I did before, but enough. And, um,. That's pretty much it. I have an Instagram, uh, also CryptoForce, where I upload a little bit more regularly. 
So, and I have quite a few things planned for uh, making like my horror content and collecting videos and stuff. Uh, I just gotta have the resources to like do it. So um, yeah, stuff stuff is in the works. So go sub and make me feel bad about not uploading so that I can make stuff. Okay, uh, heading over to you, Tammy. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? I go on this channel and another one and talk about movies. Um, and I have my own collection and I like learning what everybody else, what everybody's got to say about them. And um, now that it's summer, I enjoy going to car shows with my 1972 Grand Prix. All righty. Heading over to you, Jake. Why don't you tell us a little bit, a little bit about uh, yourself, what you do? Okay, I'm Kodabuki Jake. I am the co-host of Septum Sim vs. World on YouTube. We've been kind of sporadic lately. A little uh, video here, uh, an anime discussion there. We should, I think, I think we're poised to do our discussion on your lie in April this week. We unfortunately had to delay it a couple of times. It seems like every month we end up delaying the discussion, but we get to it eventually. <laughs> and Dave, there's still time for you to get in on it if you want to, but uh, it's it's a good one. But uh, we do, you know, a number of things, uh, and we're, we've got a vague plan to, well, I don't know if it's a, I'm going to say vague for now. <laughs> Brandon will fill you in more probably next week. But, um, you know, we've got some plans for later in the, you know, the fall But uh, for the channel. Uh, meanwhile, I keep quite busy. I have a full-time job to pay the bills, but also I'm the co-founder of RVA Homegrown Natives, where we grow native plants. And uh, we do them wholesale. And we also engage in market, uh, various markets around town. We're going to be hitting uh, First Fridays next week at Gallery 5, which will put me back on the same block as Guar Bar, so I'm going to have to swing in there and get some stuff beforehand, hopefully. Uh, that's pretty fun times. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, just keep really busy with that when we can. Uh, but we also... Uh, a couple days, well, yesterday, I uh, went out and led a uh, the local chapter of the Native Plant Society on a uh, nature hike where we found uh, a copperhead and a uh, luna moth and some other fun stuff, a uh, little uh, two-line salamander and what have you. Uh, so that was a cool little, we had a little kid with us who actually found the copperhead and the salamander, so he was on point. Uh, budding herpetologist there, uh, Dustin. <laughs> so, I Copperhead. I hope you didn't. Uh, it's kind of kind of tempting fate a little bit messing with copperheads. <laughs> I was actually very close to it. I was looking at a skink, and the kids like, "Oh, there's a snake!" And I looked down, and it, yeah, the copperhead was about two feet from me, and I was like, "Oh, yes, there it is. Yeah, good that, call, that is a snake. That is Catch." Quite a snake. <laughs> But it was a good learning moment for the whole group, so I'm really happy about that, actually. Um, and I'm just going to throw out one more thing I meant to say in the discussion. I think one reason the doc amuses me so much is there's sort of a vibe of the characters. Um, I can't remember their official names in the story offhand, but it, the characters played by Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas I feel like there's a little bit of a few notes of fear and loathing in Las Vegas between the relationship between Chevy and the doc. And so I, that amused me too. And that's one of the reasons I, I like that. And I just wanted to throw that in there since I forgot to earlier. Um, and that's about it. I, I like to, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of time for viewing, but I like to, to join these fine folks once a week to talk about stuff. And so I always try to, you know, get in a movie for that. Uh, one good thing about Action Month is we've been watching some short movies, so uh, <laughs> that, that mm -hmm. that's useful for that. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing Baby Driver next week, and that was a good, fun movie. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll look forward to that. 
All righty. Um, and my name is David Stregge. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore. So thank you for coming along with us on this fantastic journey that we've been ha having dur uh, during this action August uh, uh, month. Uh, I've been uh, thoroughly enjoying uh, getting into some of these because, uh, because I don't think action movies has been a strong suit that we've covered into. Uh, and so I'm glad that we finally had a month to do so. So, uh, I also moonlight under a different channel called Delusions of Grandeur, uh, where I do go on occasionally to, uh, do a, uh, random review of, uh, uh, different movies that, that I come across, uh, but I also do some video pickups and, uh, I also podcast under the same channel uh, on Sundays. So uh, I do believe that we are going to be going on about Batman versus Superman this next Sunday. Uh, uh, brought to us by our good friend Crow. And uh, Ooh, Superman. It's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, we covered Man of Steel the, uh, the last time it was Crow's tur uh, tur turn. So. I'm not surprised he's continuing the uh, Zack Snyder um, um, trilogy. So, uh, but uh, in any case, uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, oh, and we're doing the director's cut, so I guess that uh, that's going to be a plus. So, I'm going to have to it dig in here. It is significantly better, but. Um... It can't work miracles. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but uh, thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully uh, you'll be back with us on Sunday on uh, Delusions of Grandeur and uh, Monday uh, for uh, our next episode here. So um, everyone do have a good night and say good night, everyone. Good night and goodbye. Good night. Bye, night, everyone. Ha, 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 ha.